Hi, welcome back to Meta Perfume. I'm Emily here with Felix and Trixie. And today I'm gonna go through a review of uh, Ghost in the Shell by Etape Libre de Orange. And this is a request from a lovely subscriber, uh, Camino Seiki. Hopefully I didn't butcher that too bad. Um, she had requested this after a comment from my last video on the Organza Indecence and so I said of course I would be happy to and it actually was a really interesting exercise for me because I haven't um, been to the physical Lucky Scent locations in the area until um, I went to go pick up a sample of this there and I realized that they actually give you free samples when you're there in on site, whereas you have to buy them online if you choose to procure them that way. So that was pretty cool. So I can get, um, I got, I went to two different locations because the first one didn't have uh, this particular fragrance, but I um, was with my ex-boyfriend, <laughs> Brandon, at this store. And so each of us got to pick two samples to take home for free and I feel like that's like between 30 and 40 bucks depending on what you pick up um, worth of niche fragrance for free so that was really cool um, I picked up Ghost in the Shell and then I picked up Haas de Soie by BDK which is also very nice and a couple more Demi Rollins recommendations Minuit at Demi and Centel Complet but the Ghost in the Shell I have been working with a lot since I got it. Sorry, Felix is a little bit whiny today. Hopefully he can be quiet for this review. <laughs> um, so this fragrance is really interesting and this house is, is very interesting too. It's a French uh, perfumer and I feel like they're kind of like similar to Guerlain and that their fragrances have a lot of like conceptual framework around them. There's like stories, a lot of um, kind of interesting conceptual work that's happening to produce these fragrances. They're, they're, they're kind of like an eccentric Guerlain it seems like because they're French and their, um, their fragrances just have a lot of thought put into them. Obviously from the descriptions, if you read about this fragrance at Fragrantica, there's a long um, piece about kind of the future. It's very, it's intended to be very futuristic. It's sort of the, the man and machine combination. It has a lot of synthetic ingredients in it. So um, the notes in this fragrance are uh, tack notes of aqual, which um, most of these fragrances when I drilled down, or most of these notes when I drilled down on them came up as popular and weird, which is interesting. They're kind of unusual notes. Hey, Felix. What's up, Papa? Can you give me a minute? Um, so the top notes are aqual, hexyl acetate, and yuzu. Uh, the middle notes are smilk, which is the most prominent note in this fragrance. Then skin, mugain, which I think might be a proprietary um, floral note, like a synthetic floral note, not sure. And then jasmine, and then base notes of vinyl, guayacol, uh, and broxen, and moss. And that vinyl guayacol note gives it sort of like this slightly powdery geranium um, base. So this, this fragrance is unisex leaning feminine, I would say not intensely feminine but definitely more on the feminine side and it smells totally different on the skin than it does on the paper um, i would not recommend this as a blind buy i would say definitely get a sample before you uh, decide whether you're going to pick up a full bottle because it's very unique and it's sort of polarizing um, some people really dislike it and other people really enjoy it and i think it's it's weird enough that um, with the, the lactonic accord, that milk accord being the prominent one, um, you know, and there's also like this clean synthetic slight hint of like maybe chlorine or something um, as well. And the yuzu comes through as sort of the sweet citrus fruitiness, but not intense, um, kind of sits underneath the milk note. And then these other synthetic notes just make it very unique. So, um, yeah, this is a definitely a weird fragrance. <laughs> I think it 
uh, you know, in terms of loving or hating it, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence. I don't think I would buy a full bottle of it, um, but I'm kind of enjoying wearing it on my own. It uh, kind of sits close to the skin. It's not massively projecting. The longevity is moderate. Um, I'd say maybe four or five hours worth of scent on a single application. And I've also read that you want to not overspray it because it can become a little cloying and nauseating if you overspray. So probably stick with like one or two sprays of this to start out with so it doesn't overwhelm you. Um, and you know obviously test it out first before you <laughs> buy a full bottle because it is a little bit weird um and i wouldn't say it's like universally loved some people really like it some people dislike it so um that is my take on ghost in a shell <laughs> uh, it's like that little bit of powderiness a little bit of sweetness with this major milkiness to it. And one review I read, somebody said that it smells a little bit like baby puke. And I kind of get that. <laughs> Not in a bad way, but like, it, it doesn't smell bad. It's just that is sort of the, the thing that I guess mostly describes, <laughs> describes it the most of any of the other descriptions that I <laughs> that I was looking into. So for what it's worth um hopefully it doesn't ruin it for you because yeah. it's not it's not bad it's a it's a nice interesting fragrance that is supposedly about the future and yeah so take a read on fragrantica very interesting ghost in the shell by itat libra the orange um thanks again for tuning in please subscribe if you haven't and give it a like if you liked it and i'll see you in my next video take care bye, -bye.